Brilliant. So again, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, we're going to go over um, volunteer impact and find out if it is the right software solution for your volunteer organisation. <clears throat> so as I've mentioned already, it'd be myself and Poppy Horrocks as my co-host. So just to give you uh, a little bit of an intro from us both. So I'm Daniel Green. Um, Sales Software Advisor for Better Impact Software, uh, supporting small to enterprise sized organizations across Europe and Africa, exploring our software solutions. If you might, you might know this already just for my accent, but I'm born and raised in Essex, UK, spent most of my career in sales, helping people achieve their goals. And personally, uh, being a busy dad, raising my 11 year old son, Luke, as well. Uh, just some of an interest for myself, a bit of a, an 80s geek, loving everything 80s, but I do balance that out with my love of sport. And in particular, I can brag about this now, my favourite football team, Arsenal. Um, over to you, Poppy, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm Poppy Horrocks. I'm a volunteer project manager at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. Um, I've been working at SAS. We call it SAS for Breeze um, for the past three and a half years. Um, I started actually in the same department, which is um, public participation, and moved to volunteers on a comment um, six months into, into starting at the Trust, um, which coincided nicely with the pandemic. Um, but yeah, I've been working on various volunteer projects since starting um, with the volunteer services. Um, and I'm currently focusing on a young people's project to try and get more young people engaged and involved with our hospitals in the hope that we will inspire them to pursue careers within the NHS. Uh, I think that's about me. Brilliant. Thanks, Poppy. So just some um, takeaways um, we'll be getting from today's webinar. Uh, so firstly, common uh, problems facing volunteer service teams. Uh, we'll be covering a quick program assessment combined of uh, three questions. Most importantly, why the right software tools matter. Uh, Poppy will also share her journey and tips to successfully finding software. And then I'll be conducting a higher level overview of volunteer impact and uh, a few resources and a link to obtain your PDU certificate for attending today. So please stick around. Um, if you're not too sure what a PDU is, it's a professional development unit. Uh, some attendees may have credentials such as a CVA, whereby this regulatory body requires they earn a uh, PDU. And again, stick around, I'll share that link towards the end. So some of the problems you guys might be facing and hopefully better impact uh, can help with the solution. Maybe it's too much data entry as a problem using disconnected tools to do your job, not enough time to lead and engage your volunteers or finding affordable tools leadership, uh, which will, will approve. Or maybe it's insufficient security of your confidential volunteer data. So question one, uh, which problem resonated with you most from the last slide? If you wouldn't mind, uh, just popping in your answer in the in the chat, that'd be great. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, give you about 30 seconds to a minute to do so, if that's okay. <clears throat> I'll go through them quickly with you. So is it number one, too much data entry? Number two, using too many disconnected tools to do your job? Number three, not enough time to lead and engage with your volunteers? Number four, affordable tools leadership will approve? Or is it number five, insufficient security of your confidential volunteer data? So let's see what we got here. One and two, two ball of four. Brilliant, I see a trend here. One and one and two seems to be the most uh, popular one. Brilliant, thanks guys. Uh, question two. How are you managing your volunteers currently? Is it number one, through spreadsheets? Number two, maybe you already have a volunteer management solution in place? Or is it number three, 
uh, something else. And again, if you just wouldn't mind popping it in the chat. Yep, number one. Brilliant. It always pops up when I ask these questions. Number one seems to be surprisingly so many nonprofit organizations out there still using spreadsheets. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Question three. In your opinion, what's most at risk if a change doesn't occur sooner rather than later? Is it number one, volunteer turnover, disengagement? Number two, staff turnover, disengagement? Number three, wasted money? Number four, damage to org or program reputation? Or is it something else at number five? Well, number one seems to be leading the votes there with number five second. Okay. Thanks for that, Nicholas. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> so just we'll go over some quick stats as well for you guys. So more than half of all employees are unhappy at work because of the software tools they're using. Have you ever become dissatisfied at work due to missing or mismatched software? <clears throat> so these stats, by the way, they've come from G2's 2019 States of Software Happiness Report. So being provided the right tools to perform the job plays into our level of job satisfaction as well. And this is a quite a surprising stat, I thought. About one in eight, uh, one in eight, uh, one in every eight employees has quit a job because of mismatched software. That's uh, that's got to be some some feat to actually quit your job due to the software you're using. So I was quite surprised with that stat, but it is there. So hopefully we want to get less of this and more of this. So let's get your team working with, with the tools that make you feel less frustrated and more empowered and productive uh, moving forward. So I'm going to pass over to um, Poppy now, our co-host, and she's just going to share with you guys just, you know, her journey on selecting uh, a VMS, a volunteer management solution and, and choosing better impact and just her journey in general with, with uh, using the software. So. Poppy, if you wouldn't mind, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Daniel. Um, right. So as I said at the beginning, I've, I've been working with the trust for three and a half years. We've had a voluntary scheme for, at, the, at the trust for about 14 years. Um, prior to the pandemic, because things did change then, uh, we were paper. All, all paper we had folders of applications that um, at the admin staff would go through um, every day or every week to see where people were we had a filing system that when I uh, looked at the first time was not alphabetized it was a, a complete mess uh, if, um, if I'm perfectly honest um, however when the the pandemic uh, struck and we were all sent home uh, to work from home uh, we had to quickly adapt our processes because paper format just simply didn't work. Um, along with the changing guidance, which happened on at a daily on a daily basis at that point. Um, so we moved on to a spreadsheet um, that fortunately we used on Microsoft Teams. So me and my colleague could both access it at the same time. Uh, it's those simple little things like having a share, um, having a, an Excel sheet on a drive. You can't actually edit it at the same time as someone else. Uh, it's not foolproof. And certainly using it on Microsoft Teams wasn't foolproof either, but it was the best option we had at the time. Um, our, we, we used to use a database called MES or Engage. On that database, we had over a thousand volunteers. Um, however, in reality, it, it simply wasn't that number. Um, 
so prior to so when when the pandemic hit we had 15 volunteers who wanted to continue our bus and then we had a complete influx of new um interest and our, we were just completely overwhelmed with with how we would manage these applications where we would put people how we would go through the recruitment process and make sure these people were safe so um mez was definitely out of date we did a huge project um to call or contact every single person on that database um which took months um i'm not gonna lie it took months um but of that number we had about 300 who were vaguely interested in continuing with us so that's a big a big drop um, a lot of those people had either never completed the recruitment process had stopped one person had stopped volunteering 10 years ago um, which always stands out in my mind as to how out of date it was so we were really looking at ways that we could modernize our processes take it online and keep a realistic um, record of how many volunteers we had uh, donating and contributing their time to us um, Better Impact is really great for that because we can report uh, to senior management on how many hours volunteers give us and how many volunteers we have um, on, on the sites. So, um, yeah, the challenges, as, as Daniel's just split from, uh, they, were, they were huge. There were lots of them. Um, using paper, using spreadsheets, it just really wasn't, wasn't appropriate for us, especially as our volunteer numbers grew. Um, sorry, Daniel, you can pop to the next one now. Sorry about that. I was getting a bit ahead of no, myself. Right. <laughs> um, so our journey, we, we started, I, I'm sure a few of you may be aware of the Future NHS platform, which is like a forum for all NHS trusts. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk on that um, platform about the different uh, volunteer management software. That was a key place that we went to, to sort of, check out all the different systems that were that were available on the market. Um, better impact appealed to us because everything was in one place. Um, during the pandemic, we were writing out to everybody, which in itself is a mammoth task because you have to post everything, label it up. Um, so having everybody in one place was a real advantage for us. Um, so we could email and text volunteers through the system very easily. Um, it also, what appealed to us was that it had a profile for the volunteers to log into. So they had a platform where they could go and find all the relevant information, especially um, through a period in the NHS where guidance was changing daily, weekly, monthly. Um, where, yeah, let me figure it pop to the next one. Thank you. Um, so I've said a bit about why volunteer impact. Um, it just it really did sing to us. Um, everything in one place. It get, also gave us the opportunity to update all of our processes and procedures. I'd say a big issue was um, data protection. We spent probably six months getting it approved, um, but it was worth it in the end um we i spent a couple of months setting it up i trialed it i had a, a little focus group with with different volunteers trialing it um to see if it worked for them from the user side um i yeah adapted everything to go online um that's not to say i haven't touched it since that period it requires constant updating and you find things that you think, oh, actually, that would be really good to include. And the fact that it is customizable to your preferences is a real advantage to us. So if somebody says, oh, we, we want to start reporting on, I don't know, the amount of hours in, in this one role, we can tweak the settings. So from then on, we can start recording those figures. Um, or if, yeah, um, equality monitoring information, uh templates as something as simple as a having a pre-written template that we can send out to volunteers saves us so much time 
um, and being able to filter the volunteers that you can that you want to contact and target um, it has been great to us so yeah um, what we got on here top three impact features value for money certainly um, it, it was one of the cheaper solutions that we found functionality and the fact that it is customizable um, I don't think one piece of software is going to do everything that you want to do, want it to do, but it's certainly nearly there. Um, we we get so much from it um, that we didn't have before. And an all-in-one platform, what we like is now we've got a really solid foundation. So we've got our recruitment process in place on Better Impact we've got our roles set up on there we've got our reporting function set up on there so now we can focus on enhancing our volunteer service and going taking it that bit extra and that bit further someone said before that they they is um struggling to engage with volunteers or that was the main reason for for um looking at new software that's exactly what we've been able to do whether it's been online or or provide face-to-face -face events we have a much better engagement with um, with our volunteers now than we used to, and we know that the numbers are accurate on the system. Um, <clears throat> what else do you want from me, Daniel? <laughs> oh no, you. Do you know what you was carrying on? Uh, you've mentioned so many awesome kind of things. Using. And that's that's great you know i could just sit back and, and listen and and probably lose track of the pages we we're on but i, no, I said this to daniel earlier i could talk about volunteering for days and i can talk about better impact for days so if if i've rushed through anything please just feel free to get in contact with me um or, or via daniel and i'd be happy to go through how how we make the system work for us um as i said we've we've adapted it to suit our processes and our ways um of working and it has been a, a team effort as well so whilst i did the initial setup it's been a, a team effort to say oh actually poppy could we have this drop down could we could we change that so it makes a little bit more sense and being open to those changes has really helped us to get where we are today um and we're we're really lucky in the fact that we've got 330 active volunteers across both hospital sites we've got 127 volunteers in process who we aim to process within um two months we can keep on track of that number as well so we can see if they're getting to that two month period why have they been in touch with us have they even logged into the system what's stopping them from actually completing the recruitment process and if they're not that committed to completing the recruitment process they're probably going to not be that committed as a volunteer so we can wipe them wipe them off the system at that point wow but i'll stop talking no that, that's absolutely fine and thanks so much for that poppy um there you go so i know it can be quite overwhelming but Quite a lot of features there for you guys to to get to grip uh, grips with um i'm just going to now go over um a brief overview um on my demo account can everyone see my my page okay uh, the new one with the demo account on it <clears throat> brilliant thanks guys um so yeah we'll spend about 15 20 20 minutes i say we're just going to go a brief overview and again if you have any questions uh aimed at me or, or poppy um you know, feel free to uh, send towards the end, or if you'd like to uh, ask Poppy any questions now, feel free to, to pop it in the chat, and I'm sure she'll respond. Um, so just to begin, guys, as I mentioned, this is my demo account. I've logged in, and this is the administration portal. So as an administrator, this is what you guys will see. This is what Poppy sees when she logs in. Uh, this is our dashboard, okay? So we're just going to mainly just go over these main kind of icons at the top here. So we've got people, uh, communicate, assigning, uh, reporting, and the configuration icon. <clears throat> Excuse me, but just to begin with, as I mentioned, this is your dashboard. So when you log in, this is what you're presented with. Now, it's always good to know that when you do um, set up application forms and you get volunteers applying, they're going to automatically land into your account. 
and they're going to land in one of these statuses you can see in these circles here okay um, and this is kind of where they're going to sit throughout their journey with you in your programs so when you do create these application forms which by the way you can you can create some of the software you'll be able to generate links for this add this to your website and this is where you're going to drive for recruitment uh, so let's say i've i wanted to apply uh, with your organization go to your website apply there i'm going to land in here so applicants is everyone that started your application form but not yet finished could be that they're coming back at a later time so finish that off but they will still be sitting here as an applicant uh, the next status along is in process so these are all volunteers that have completed your application forms however you're still waiting to approve or reject any kind of qualifications any custom fields because you will be able to set approvals uh, uh approvals on these as well uh once they have been accepted, you can then move them over to accepted. Uh, so here, this is everyone accepted in your program, basically. Uh, next one along, inactive. So these are all volunteers that are taking a long leave of absence. This could be they're just taking a long break from volunteering. It could be that they're on maternity or medical leave, but at some point we'll be returning back to your program. And lastly, we have archived. And you, so there it gives you a drop down menu there of what it covers under the archive. This could be people that were rejected at the start, dismissed, moved on, resigned, wherever the case may be. Okay, so particularly for recruitment, they're most likely going to land in one of these uh, top three statuses here. We've got plenty of um, dashboard um, kind of highlights as well. So it will always remember your volunteers' birthdays and anniversaries. It will be flagged up here on the dashboard. Uh, along with any kind of uh, approvals you need to reject or approve from an administration point of view. This could be custom field approvals, uh, qualification approvals. It's also good to know that you can add expiry dates to the qualifications as well, and they will flag up on here when them uh, qualifications are due to expire. So that's great. So that would just prompt you as an administrator just to reach out to that particular volunteer just to get them to renew that because uh, it could be the case that they may not be eligible now moving forward if that uh, uh, qualification has expired. Um, we've got here as well, um, pin searches. I'll cover this when we go through kind of communications and, and the searching for people. Um, but what we'll start with, first of all, is the configuration icon. So click on here. <clears throat> Every time you click on one of these main icons, it always brings down subcategories here on the left-hand side. Okay, so it's from the configuration uh, part of the software, you'll be able to, this is where you'll be able to create your branding. So it's good to know when you do create these application forms, it'd be branded by your organization. Um, the public page, you'll be also be able to create where you could advertise activities, you can create a news feed. Uh, add this to your website as well, and this will all be branded by your organization, as well as um, the My Impact page. If you're not too sure, guys, what that is yet, that is the volunteer login portal, which allows volunteers to log in, gives them the opportunity to work a little bit more self-sufficiently, and from there, they'll be able to uh, assign themselves up for any activities, any shifts. They'll be able to log their hours and give any feedback required as well and that is also branded by organization that's called uh, my impact page of volunteer login portal which is also app based so your volunteers will be able to download it for free on any android or iphone device and we've got some time i'll show you what that looks like from the volunteers perspective from the my impact page as well so there you'll be able to do your branding here you'll be able under the profile customization You'll be able to create uh, your custom fields, your qualifications. If you guys ain't too sure what a custom field is yet, because I've mentioned it quite a few times already, I like to call it your data collecting question. So a custom field is just anything, any data you want to collect from that, that particular volunteer. So these could be things like references, emergency contact information, what languages do you speak, what t-shirt size are you, whatever it could be. These are your kind of customized questions. And you can manipulate what type of answers you want with these as well. So these could be things like um, long text, short text boxes, drop down menus, 
uh, date fields, number fields, check boxes, and also a file upload as well. So if you are creating a custom field to add your application form, and you may want to see a CV from the uh, volunteer, create a file upload, and that will give the opportunity for the volunteer to download a file. And all this information will be stored on the volunteer profile in this administration portal as well. Um, and that's the same with qualifications. Create whatever qualifications you, you want. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can add expiry dates to these. Uh, it's also good to know you will be able to create badges as well for the software. So these badges could be signs of recognitions. These could be qualifications. These could be lifetime hours. Could be uh, volunteer anniversaries as well. So certain milestones, you can create badges. Uh, we have got a template you can use as you can see here on the left-hand side. You can also download some images if you want, just be wary of copyright if you're gonna Google an image. And from here on recruitment, this is where you'll be able to uh, create general interests. These are what I call want ads. So general interests are kind of areas or expertise of fields that the volunteer is interested in. So is it health? Is it gardening? Is it administration? So these are what we call once ads. And from here, this is where you will be able to generate your links to the website. So as I've mentioned, you can create public pages, you can create application forms. And once you've seen this as well, and I've seen it and it's ready to go, just generate that link, and copy and paste it into your website. Uh, you'll be able to create activities under the configuration icon as well. So under manage activities here on the left hand side, if I click on that. There we go. There's just some we've created. Um, so activities are what the, uh, you know, we call them opportunities, activities, some organizations may name them differently, but these are the activities that, that your volunteers will be signing up for. You can also put them into categories as well. So administration will be a category, and then you can add your activities to that category as well. Uh, feedback fields. This is a great way to collect feedback from all your volunteers. So when you create feedback fields, similar to custom fields, you will be able to uh, manipulate what type of answers you want to collate from the feedback field. This could be a number field, date field, uh, a long text or a drop down menu as well. <coughs> You create these and then you apply them to the activity. And then when, as a volunteer, if I have started and finished activity, I now want to log my hours, it would give me um, the option to uh, give you guys feedback on that as well. Um, just a little thing to touch on resources as well, e-learning modules. This could be, uh, this could be a very handy uh, resource for you guys. E-learning modules. This is a great way just to create these online training courses for your volunteers to take. Um, you can create as much blurb as text to these uh, e-learning modules. You can add images, GIFs. You can add videos backed up by YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, you can also set like a little quiz for your volunteers to take on this e-learning module as well. And you can also um, pick and choose what kind of passing score you want your volunteers to pass with as well. Once you create these e-learning modules, uh, you can apply them to the My Impact page. And from there, that's where the volunteers will be able to take these e-learning modules. And you'll also be able to um, link qualifications with these as well. So just moving back up to the top, uh, there's so many features I'd like to show you all on here, guys, but I know we, we're short on time. Um, so these main uh, icons at the top, like I said, if you press on the home tab, that takes you back to your dashboard. If I click on people, again, on the left hand side, this brings back, uh, brings down all these subcategories. This is where you can add volunteers because you can add them manually as well. Um, you can add administrators as well, or you can create quick searches to look for people as well. So let's click on search just underneath the people uh, icon here. <clears throat> Click on that. Uh, let's say you just want to have a quick list of all your accepted volunteers. There we go. It gives you kind of a filtering page here. So if I select accepted, scroll down, 
click on search. There we go. 228 uh, volunteers, accepted volunteers in my program. Now you will be able to filter this down further as well. So I'm going to keep it on accepted. But what I want to do now is add a search criteria. So I am going to look for just a quick search of all my volunteers that let's say volunteer at weekends only. Okay, so click on the search type drop down menu. As you can see here, so, so many you'll be able to search for. Feedback fields, hours logged, activities, general interests, custom fields, which could be a popular one, but I'm looking for weekend availability. So I'm gonna check the, uh, I'm gonna click on the general availability. <clears throat> it brings up this uh, general availability chart. I'm just gonna select Saturday and Sunday, add and go, and there we go. 25 people were matched. And what you can do, if you just want to have that as a quick search list, you can save that, give it a name, something like weekend availability. And if you check that box that says pin search and save, that will be saved. Basically, you're creating a shortcut, so it'll be saved on your dashboard there. So there we go. I've got one at the bottom there, one I've made earlier, weekend availability. And this could be for anything, like I say, qualifications. You just want to have a list of everyone that has a passed their DBS background checks, for example, anything like that. And it's quite, it works very similar with the communications side as well. So again, if I click on the communicates icon down on the left-hand side, there's three main methods of communication you can use throughout the software. You can send emails, you can send text messaging, <coughs> or text messages, sorry. And you'll be able to do mail out as well. You'll be able to do this in mass, in filtered groups, or just to individuals as well. So I'll just give you a quick example here. Let's, uh, let's say we want to send an email. Click on send email. Very similar page to what we saw on the people search. Uh, again, let's say I want to reach out to if one accepted. Um, and again, you can just click on that. It brings down all the list of all your accepted volunteers. But again, uh, similar um, process. We're going to click on add search criteria. Now I'm going to search for, let's say, if one has a particular qualification. Click on that. Now all your qualifications will be listed here. These are all the ones we've made up. Uh, so let's say um, as a background check. So this probably in terms means a DBS background check is equal to has passed. Expiry date, uh, we'll just ignore that for now. Add and go, and there we go, 43 people were found. You can click on this little plus icon here that brings you down to the list of 43. So if, uh, let's say Daniel Wilson, for example, doesn't need to be included in this email, you could just uncheck him and he won't be included. And there we go. And all you need to do, put the body of your email in there, and then send at the bottom there. And that will go out to them 43 people. Um, you can also create, I think Poppy might have mentioned this before, you can create email templates as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. So something like uh, monthly newsletters, for example. You can create that. You can tweak these as well. You can also add images, links, attachments to these emails as well. And then again, send out. If you're doing like a monthly newsletter, obviously this is, uh, you could do this in masses, go out to everyone. You can do any kind of email templates, you know, reminders for your volunteers to log their hours before the end of the week, anything like that as well. And it works the same with the uh, sending text messages as well. Just to let you know uh, on the text messaging, it's only a one way uh, communication. So you'll be able to send text messages, but your volunteers will not be able to reply. And secondly, uh, in order for your volunteers to receive SMS servicing, they have to opt in when they uh, create their My Impact page if they want to receive the uh, text in or not. Cool. Um, if we go over, so assign, click on this. And again, on the left-hand side, this is where you could just, you know, have a look at your scheduling, have a look, focus on uh, activities that have still not been uh, fulfilled yet, uh, filled in with volunteers. If we click on this, you can see this from a list, an unscheduled list. We have a scheduled uh, scheduled list or from a calendar. So if I click on calendar, 
There we go. You can see it uh, month to month and even day to day. And it gives you a kind of a color spectrum there from red to blue. OK, so red, meaning them activities haven't are still vacant. The minimum uh, required volunteers for that activity has not been matched or met yet. So you probably need to focus on that. The ones that are blue means you probably haven't got to worry about that. The minimum amount of volunteers needed for activity has been confirmed. So you can also click on these days. So let's click on Wednesday, 1st of Feb. If you hover over it, there we go, click on the day. It gives you a, a list of all the activities that are taking place on that day, okay? And you see there's lots of reds there. So what you can do, let's say uh, accommodation room one. You wanna click on that. And from here, again, you've got this filtering page. You'll be able to filter out who is um, eligible for to uh, participate in volunteering for this accommodation room one activity. So what you could do is filter it whatever you need to. I'll just keep it all blank. I'll keep it on accepted and must be qualified. And press search. And then just down below, it brings down all the volunteers that you can assign to this activity. Just click on that. You can do it in uh, bulk as well if you want to. And it's good to know that, you know, most of the time your volunteers will be doing this and assign themselves up for these activities via the My Impact page. However, it could be that you do have volunteers that may be quite elderly, maybe not quite IT tech savvy, or maybe in an area where there's not great Wi-Fi or internet connection. You could pretty much do everything on their behalf. You could just go to their profile. You can assign them up for shifts. You can even log their hours and feedback if required as well. So you can pretty much do everything on their behalf. All you need to do is back on the people icon, click on that, add them as a volunteer. If I go on here, you've got some mandatory fields there you'll need to fill in, literally uh, first name, last name, give them a username, uh, their address. And then if you know they're not going to be using the My Impacts page, you can check this box at the top here that uh, represents that this person will not be logging into the system and a username and a password will automatically be generated for them as well. Um, if we go over to reports, click on this. It's great to know that, and this is a great robust part of the software, that you can report on pretty much anything and everything as long as you have that data tracked and recorded. And again, on the left-hand side here, I'll just cover a, a couple of um, scenarios. So there we go. There's loads of lists there. Hours by category, hours by activity, hours by volunteer. If I just click on that, you can pretty much uh, report over any date range, you know, last, last year to date, year to date, last week, last month, anything like that. So let's do uh, last year because we're only in January. We've got data for Jan. Uh, once you click your date range, view reports, it's good to know you'll be able to export this to CSV and Excel as well, any of these reports. There you go, just a quick one we've done. We're giving the total number of hours per volunteer. So starting off at the top with the most hours per volunteer, right through to the bottom. And then it gives you a total hours, number of volunteers and average per volunteer towards that as well. Um, we can do, let's say, an hours trend. Let's click on that one. There we go. So I've done over February. Number of hours by month. Number of volunteers with logged hours by month. An average per volunteer, giving you an in a bar graph format as well. What's really great that I like is that you will be able to produce uh, your kind of your own bespoke reports as well. So just here at the bottom under general reports, you've got this section here, personal profile raw data. If you was to click on that, again, back to this very similar filtering page. Again, you could report on any of the uh, statuses. I'm just gonna choose accepted again, press search. Here we go, you've got loads of fields you can report on as well. So let's just uncheck that. It already pre-populates first name and last name as checked. 
You can report over any custom fields you want. So let's say F1 that speaks, uh, just say English, has references, has emergency contact information. And then that's all your custom fields. Then we're down to qualifications. So let's say has a background check and also a COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, general interests, let's say special events and guest services that are available, let's say Monday to Friday. And again, you can pick and choose what you like to uh, report on. Once you've done that, you can view profiles. And there we go. Brings up all the info that you've selected to report on. And you just go across with all the selected fields. There we go. Background checks. Past with the dates. And so on. Brilliant. I'm just going to switch over now, guys. Um, so that's pretty much, like I said, there's, there's more to it. I'd love to show you show you more to just some of the basic overview features of the software. Um, just something as well, sorry, while I'm on here, when you do want to look at a volunteer profile, you've got this search box in the top right. Um, you've got this icon, uh, people icon, the compass, which helps find a page, or you've got this question mark. This question mark, by the way, is very useful. Click on that. You can ask the software whatever you want, you know, uh, custom fields, how to add a custom field, whatever it could be. There we go. Add a new custom field. Click on that. And it will come back with either step-by-step -step guides or videos for you as well. Okay. Uh, but on here, if I click on the icon, uh, the people icon, sorry, this is where you want to search for your individual volunteers. So let's just say I want to search for Veronica. She's my demo volunteer. You start typing in the name. And then it kind of pre-populates uh, what you're typing. And there we go. Click on uh, Veronica. And this is the volunteer profile. So from here, I'll be able to see, as you can clearly see there, a profile picture of Veronica, a quick glimpse of her contact information, history, most recent contributions and next shift. There's a bar graph uh, signaling her hours, which she's contributed over each month. And you can see in a pie chart version, total hours by activity as well, and also her badges. There's so many things you can do on here on the, on the volunteer profile. If you just want to communicate with just Veronica, you can do so. Just click on communications, send an email, send a text message. If she has that, if she's opted in for that. You can also send a personal message. If you used to click on that, you just want to say, Yep, thanks so much for your help from the last shift for coming in the last minute. <clears throat> and then if you save that, <clears throat> excuse me, that will then be uh, saved and visible on her My Impacts page on the home page. And like I said, you can assign volunteers to shifts. Just go into um, Veronica's uh, profile. You can see her schedule. Excuse me. Which you can see in the list format. You can also see this in the calendar format. You'll also be able to print this off, this calendar format as well. So if, if Veronica does want something tangible by hand, she wants to put on her fridge, she doesn't use the computer much, you can do that. She can also be able to do that from her My Impact page as well. You can see her hours that she's logged. And so much more. There's her contact information on the subcategories, subtabs, all her custom fields. So this is all her answers to what she's filled in. So these are the custom fields that we've made up. Her qualifications. General interests. And general availability. She would have filled this all in probably at the start when she applied or just throughout. She'll always be able to make changes from her profile. And then you've got a miscellaneous tab as well. So from here, you will be able to uh, change the status of that volunteer. If she's 
no longer associated with your organization, you can archive her from here. Brilliant. Okay, guys, I'm going to quickly just show you, bear with me, the what it looks like from the volunteers' perspective. I've just got to log back in, bear with me. Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? Brilliant. So I'm, I've logged in as if I'm Veronica Smith. Uh, by the way, this demo account I was using was based upon a, a museum, so an example city museum. So as I said, this is um, the desktop version of the My Impact page. So this is Veronica's login portal. So on here, as you can see at the top, there's all the branding that you can use. So your branding will be at the top here in uh, what we call a banner. You're going to see a lot of similar information that we saw from Veronica's profile from the administration portal. So there's her badges. Again, there's a profile picture she'll be able to upload at any time. We've got this Im image gallery. Now, this is this is based upon Flickr, uh, Flickr feed. So it's quite an old school social media, but we still have that. There's that personal message that I said will be presented to Veronica on her homepage. Uh, you'll also be able to add a news feed. So not only on the public page, but on the My Impact page, you can add a news feed. All volunteers will see this news feed. As you can see there, you can add as much text and images. About us, this is more of a mission statement. So just giving a about us on your organization. You'll be able to put in your um, social media feeds onto the My Impacts page. So your volunteers will be able to follow this, like any social media feeds that you put here. This could be with Facebook and Twitter. Right at the bottom, we do have a resource called a document library um, on the administration portal. So from there, you'll be able to download any uh, or upload, download any documents. These could be uh, policies, waiver forms, help files, you can have them for just admins, but you can also share them with uh, with volunteers as well. And if you do, they'll be presented here in the bottom right, where your volunteers will gain access to them files. Now, just along the top here, we've got these tabs. I'll quickly go through these because I know we're short on time. So as Veronica, if I want to see, uh, if I want to sign up for a shift or an activity, I could do this in a list format. As you can see, they're all based in their categories. But what's a little bit easier is on the eye, uh, on a on a calendar format. Click on that. And there we go. So if I want to sign up for team A, team leader, on the 31st, just click on that. And I can sign up there. You'll be able to automate the visibility settings on your activities as well. So uh, do you want these displayed to only volunteers who are qualified and accepted for this particular activity? So, for example, if you've created an activity and had a qualification that I need a DBS background check, if I haven't got that as a volunteer, I, if I, that qualification that is, I won't see this in the calendar. So you can automate that as well. I can see my own schedule. So what do I have up and coming? Again, if I do want to see that on a calendar format, just click on there. And again, I will be able to print this off as well. If I click on the hours tab, this is where I will be able to download, sorry, not download. Uh, this is where I'll be able to log my hours uh, and any feedback needed as well. So for example, let's say I've just come back from a shift, let's say information booth attendant. There we go. I put on the dates and the hours um, of when I volunteered and contributed. And there we go. There's the feedback fields that I'll have to uh, put in a response to as well. And now I can save and log that. You've got the reports tab as well. Again, just for my own um, uh, benefits, if I want to see how many hours I've contributed over the past year, 
in a bar graph format, I can see that. I'll be able to contact um, any admins from this uh, tab as well. I can pick and choose which admin and then send an email. And lastly, on my profile tab here, I could update, see my contact information, additional info, which will be combined of things like the custom fields. There we go. All similar info that we saw from the uh, administration portal. And also, as I mentioned before, in the e-learning modules, I will be able to take from the training side here as well. Brilliant. I'm just going to go back to the next slide. Be bear with me, people. I hope everyone can see that screen okay. Excellent. So this, going back to the slide now, um, hopefully that was, I know it's quite a lot to take in in such a short notice of time, uh, such a short spot of time, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what Better Impact offers. And this results page, by the way, was produced from Poppy's uh, Return of Investment Calculator, which any of you guys can gain access to from our website, uh, betterimpact.co.uk, just to see you know, how much time and effort and money you'll be saving. Um, I won't go into detail on this one, um, but there we go. It gives you an idea of Poppy's kind of hours per week. Now with the results. And this is based on using the Better Impact software compared to uh, the, uh, the software she was using before Better Impact. So um, just to let you know um, that better impact, you know, we're best support business, winter 2003, best meets requirements, winter 2023, leader winter 2023. So just to give you a little bit of story of better impact, it was funny enough started by Fluke uh, with our CEO Tony's passion project uh, for building a web-based volunteer management software solution for a residential hospice he founded, which then gave birth to the beginnings of a global We're Here to Help uh, company. We are about 20 plus years old now. I think we started back in 2000. We are a small company, but we do have a global impact. We have offices uh, here in the uh, UK. We have offices in Canada, USA, and also Australia as well, uh, with customers all over the globe. Uh, we specialize in volunteer management software, but we are also providers of clients, donor and member solutions that also integrate with volunteer impact. And most importantly, we are a, a we're hit to hit. We're a we're to hit. We're a here to help company. Oh, got there in the end. Uh, just something as well. Some of you uh, joining today. You may have programs where your volunteers interact with clients and engage with clients. Um, this could be ideal for hospices, pet therapy, social services, it could even, you know, for the NHS as well, uh, particularly if you do need to keep a report and profiles of these clients as well. Uh, we do offer client impact as one of the other modules, but feel free, you know, there's plenty more uh, webinars up and coming. This year, just go to the website and have a look for the events um, if that's uh, intrigued you as well. So just wrapping up, uh, some emails coming your way, guys. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I will be sending a recording link to one of uh, to all of you guys here uh, with a link to watch a comprehensive demo video of Volunteer Impact if you haven't done so already. And also a link if you do want to have a chat, a one-on-one -on -one chat with me to discuss your software needs further. And I'm also now going to send you um, the link for the PDU certificate. So thanks, guys, for all hanging around. There we go. I've popped that in the chat. Um, Betterimpact.com VI uh, certificate. So like I say, click on that link go through the setup and uh, grant yourself that PDU certificate. Uh, I'd like to say a big thanks to Poppy 
as well um, for your journey, just for going through all the features, if not all, most, if not all of them. That uh, that's brilliant. So big uh, big shout out to Poppy there. And lastly, guys, we'll finish up now. I know we've gone a little bit over time, but we'll finish up with some uh, questions. If, if anyone has any. Everyone's all quiet. I've got a question, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Go, go ahead, Michelle. Hiya. So we're just starting to use the members module um, a bit more in terms of the software. And we're in the process of kind of getting a bulk database ready to upload. If I wanted to have a chat to somebody about that, um, would it be yourself that I'd be best contacting? Um, sorry, was that a data import for member upload? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, by all means, I am, I'll be happy to email you um, yeah, the specifications right. needed for a data import, whether it's volunteer okay. or client and donor. I can email that over. Uh, yep. being a, but it will be your member success advisor that will be kind of processing that for you. So I'll send that over. If you have got any queries, um, uh, have you dealt with Thomas before? I haven't noticed. I'm fairly new to the North Pennines team. So I've been kind of tasked with looking at the members part of the software and getting that data ready. So if you've got a contact and details yeah. of that contact, you can share. I'll, that'd be brilliant. I'll email that over for you. It will give you okay. everything needed there for a data import. Like I said, whether it's volunteer, member, clients, or donor. And then okay. yeah, have a look for that and then come back to me if you've got any other questions. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Um, any other questions from anyone at all? Oh, there we go. I think a uh, question out for you, Poppy. Yeah. Um, I spent probably a couple of months setting it up, but only because I had other responsibilities um, to juggle at the same time. Um, it was fairly easy, I would say, but it just, I, I would say, if you get your application sorted and you know what you want to transfer across, a lot of it can be done for you. Um, so Thomas Brindle, um, who works at, at Better Impact, imported all of our application onto the system. So it was just a matter of going through that and checking it. Um, and then it was really a case of just starting to use it and tweaking it as we went. Um, so it, it was mammoth task. I'm not going to lie about that. It was a big project to embark on, but the, the benefits far outweigh um, the 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 con the disadvantages yeah. yeah it's definitely worth um, it in the long run yeah absolutely and i mean i i'm quite now i because i set it up i know the system inside out so i know how to report and we use it every day every day we log in we see where we are see what applicants we've got where we are within process volunteers and it is something that you have to commit to um, and update the templates and update things as you go along. But in my opinion, that's the only way to, to run a voluntary service because then everything's up to date and you're not, you're not looking at out of date documents all the time. But get in touch with me if, if you want me to um, explain it a, a little bit further how we use it. I'd be happy to do that. I'm here for another month and then I'm going on maternity leave. So pick it up quickly if you need to. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Poppy. And yeah, you know, it's um and it all depends on the size of your, your organization as well. You know, if it, if you're um a small organization with you know 10 to 50 volunteers, it's gonna take a lot quicker to set up than maybe an enterprise edition where you have different departments, locations and five thousand volunteers. So it all depends on the size of your organization as well. Um, we'll always encourage, if you haven't done so, Tamsin, to trial the software as well. Um, I can send that to you. Uh, feel free as well if you do want to have a one-to-one -one with me. But um, the trial uh, that we offer, you've got full access to the trial accounts, including our full support. And you can use that as a transition period as well, because uh, if it does tick your boxes through the trial and you do want to place an order afterwards, that trial account becomes your main member account, so you won't lose any of the workflow that you guys already started as well. Brilliant. Um, 
I think that's it, guys. Unless anyone has any last questions, if you have got if you have got any outstanding questions, feel free to to ping me an email, Daniel at BetterImpact.co.uk, and I'll be happy to answer them. Or even as I mentioned before, uh, booking a what we call a discovery call one to one with me, and I'll be able to discuss them uh, things further with you guys. Um, but on that note, yeah, I would say um, great. Yep, yeah, thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, most appreciated. Hopefully you've managed to go through and uh, do your PDU certificates. And a, a great big thanks to Poppy as well. So thanks, Poppy. Um, it's great to hear your journey as always. And again, I'll send a, a link to this um, webinar to you guys shortly afterwards. In the meantime, all have a great day and hopefully speak to you all soon. Take care, guys. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.